Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from Psalm 149, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 4. This is what it says. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, and His praise in the congregation of the godly ones. Let Israel be glad in His Maker. Let the sons of Zion rejoice in their King. Let them praise His name with dancing. Let them sing praises to Him with timbrel and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in His people. I want to read that one more time. The Lord takes pleasure in His people. Did you know the Lord takes pleasure in you? The Lord takes pleasure in His people. He will beautify the afflicted ones with salvation. Pray with me. Lord, it's your salvation, your hand, your healing, your salve that we need most. This day, as we join together, may we hear your voice. And be transformed by it. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Max Lucado told a story about a, a little songbird named Chippy. Chippy was a happy little bird. Sat on his perch and just sang all day long. Until one day, Chippy's owner was cleaning out his cage. She had the, the hose of the vacuum cleaner in the bottom of the cage. And she was cleaning up the, the mess that Chippy had made when the phone rang. She turned to look at the phone when what she heard was, and Chippy was gone. Down the hose and into the dirt bag. She quickly turned off the vacuum cleaner, tore into the dirt bag, and there was little Chippy. He was still alive, but she grabbed him and she, she put him under the faucet. She turned on the water full blast and tried to, to knock some of that dirt off Chippy, but Chippy didn't look too good, so she pulled out the, the hair dryer. Feathers went everywhere, and she began to blow dry Chippy. And she realized she wasn't doing any good, so she put Chippy back in his cage. He was alive, and got a call. she got a call from a friend a couple of days later that asked, well, how is Chippy doing? And all she could say was, well, Chippy doesn't sing much anymore. Maybe you've been there before. Sitting on your perch, life was good. And everything seemed like it was just one day was better than the next. Um, and then you got knocked off your perch. All you heard was, and life got hard real quick. Well, life is hard. Life is difficult. And if you've lived much of life at all, you know that, that it's not a theme park where one ride is better than the next, which is better than the next, and is better than the next. Life is, is difficult, and you may be there right now. No matter where you are or what's going on, I'm glad that you're here this morning. You're in the right place. Because we came this morning to sing a new song. A new song that Psalm 149, this, we're, this, I read out of the, the hymn book for the early church, the hymn book for ancient Israel. 
And there have been 148 songs sung so far. And now on the, the 149th song, you would have thought 148 would have been enough. But there's one more. And, and it says, sing to the Lord a new song. That there's always room enough for one more song of praise, one more song of honor, one more song of thanks. Jesus, he quoted from the Psalms more than any other book in the Old Testament. That it was in worship that they would come together and they would sing these songs and carry with them on into the week, on into the the coming days. Even from the cross, we find Jesus quotes from the Psalms. It's Psalm 22, verse 1. He says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? There's room enough in the sorrow. There's room enough in the suffering. There's room enough in the pain to cry out to God and to cry out, Why? But all who had heard the Psalms, all who had been to, to worship, who knew the singing, knew there was an answer to the question, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Verse 24 says, he has not hidden his face. When he cried for help, God heard. That's the answer. That's the answer. That it's in the, the, the praise that it's in the singing, in the thanksgiving, in the giving honor to God, that we connect. We connect to what God's doing in and through us and in, in the world. That no matter where you are, no matter where you've been today, today is a good time for a new song, a new song. And the first thing that I want to talk about this morning, a new song, because his strength is stronger than our fear. His strength is stronger than our fear. Bill Floyd, in his, his book, Stories I Love to Tell, tells a story about Louis Armstrong when he was a little boy. It's filed under the, the category of fear fouls the pond. That Louis Armstrong, when he was a little boy, was walking past an old woman's house and the old woman came out and said Louis why don't you take my bucket and go down to the spring and get me a bucket of, of water Louis said yes ma'am and grabbed the bucket went down to the spring when he was down there two eyes popped up out of the spring he ran back and he started screaming Miss Allie Mae Miss Allie Mae there's an alligator in your pond to which she said Louis that old alligator's been there for years and years he's a lot more afraid of you than you are of him to which Louis Armstrong said, well, if he's more afraid of me than I am of him, that water ain't fit to drink. <laughs> well, fear does foul the pond, but fouls up a lot more than that. Fear fouls our relationships, our relationship with family, our relationship with friends, and fear fouls our relationships with God. It was Ernest Becker in his book, The Denial of Death, who said, so many of the fears we grapple with, the fear of rejection, abandonment, failure, separation, loss, are but manifestations of the ultimate fear, the fear of death. Fear. Fear is what our, our culture has been breathing day in and day out. But Jesus Christ... He lets us know. He lets you and me know through Scripture. He is the good shepherd. And for ancient Israel, that, that, for the early church, that would have screamed to them Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. It was the rod that, that the shepherd used to protect the sheep from the wolf from the lion, from the bear. The staff was what rescued the sheep when the sheep went those places that it ought not have gone. That the shepherd was equipped 
in every situation to help the sheep. He goes on to say, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My, thou hast anointed my head with oil. It was the shepherd who, who always had oil for the injuries that the sheep would incur. That it's the healing touch of Jesus Christ, the good shepherd. That wherever you've gone, wherever you've been, that his strength is stronger than your failure. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Today. It's a good day to sing a new song, a song of praise, and a song of honor, a song of thanksgiving to Jesus, the good shepherd, because his strength is stronger than our failure. The second thing that I want to talk about this morning is that his forgiveness is stronger, stronger than our failure. The story of many of you know Corey Ten Boom, she was, um, wrote a little book called The Hiding Place that talked about her family. They had harbored Jews during World War II, and they were betrayed by someone that knew the family. They told the Gestapo that Corey and her family were harboring Jews, and they not only arrested the Jews, but they arrested the entire family and threw them in the Ravensbrück concentration camp. And there, all of the family died with the exception of Corey. She survived through a record-keeping error. She committed her life after the war to going around a war-torn Germany and telling them of the forgiveness that Jesus offers. She talks about in this book her own struggle with forgiveness, forgiving the man that had betrayed her and her family, forgiving those that it had put to death her family, those that had injured her. And she went to her pastor. She began to, to share with him her difficulty of forgiveness. He listened, and then at the, when she stopped talking, he said, Corey, there's a bell up in the steeple. And there's a rope that comes down from that bell. And, and when I, well, every day when I pull on that bell, he said, the bell begins to ring. And it rings as long as I, I pull the rope. And when I stop pulling the rope, well, it rings for a little while longer, a little more slowly, and then not as loud. And finally it stops. He turned to her and said, in order for you to forgive, you've got to let go of the rope. So often it is. We hang on to the rope. We practice the betrayal. We practice the failure. We practice what others have done to us and how horrible it is. We've got to have strength that we don't have. Strength enough to let go of the rope. Jesus died on the cross to forgive you and me all that's past, all that that, that, that's present and all that would be. But the really wonderful news is that he rose from the grave in order to live his life through us, that we would have power. We don't have power to be able to let go of the rope, to forgive ourselves and to forgive others as well. David, David knew the, the power needed for forgiveness. And he knew it was power that he didn't have. He had hurt his family, and he had hurt his family deeply. There was a brokenness because of his episode with Bathsheba. He had a son that wanted to kill him. And so in Psalm 139, he turns to God in verse 23 and 24, and he says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thought, and see if there's any wicked Way in me and lead me back to the everlasting way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. And it's in Jesus Christ there's a, there's a life, 
a life that has the abundance of forgiveness, enough forgiveness to forgive you and me, an abundance of forgiveness to forgive others as well, to let go of the rope. Life is hard. And letting go of that that rope of unforgiveness, that's hard too. The risen Christ has strength we don't have. And we can sing of His, His praise for that strength that is stronger than our failure. We can sing His praise, a new song, to give honor to Him and to give thanks that He has strength enough to help us let go of the rope. His forgiveness is stronger than our failure. His strength is stronger than our fear. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is that His joy is stronger than our sorrow. The Apostle Paul wrote more books of the Bible than anyone else. I invite you to read those books. Little books in the, in the, the back of the Bible, they were written to, to churches. They were written to individuals. They were written to to give strength, to lift up those around them. And they do the same thing today. They give strength of the risen Christ. But Paul, Paul knew what it was like to have the song sucked right out of him. He knew suffering. He knew hardship. He had been shipwrecked. Not only that, he'd been beaten with rods. He'd not only been beaten with rods five times, he'd been beaten with whips. Within one stroke of death, they threw rocks at him till they thought he was dead. They threw him over the wall of the city and left him for dead. When he finally recovered, they threw him in jail because he wouldn't quit speaking about the power of Jesus Christ. And it's there from prison that he writes some of his most powerful, powerful words to lift up the people around him. He wrote to a church in Colossae, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. He says, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. Not just a little bit of Christ dwell in you. Not just hearing a few of the words of Christ, but let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. With all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. How? With psalms and hymns. And spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. It's why we come together in worship. That we might embrace, that we might practice, that we might rehearse the praise. That we might rehearse the, the honor, the thanksgiving to Jesus Christ. And carry it into our week. And it gives the word of Christ the one who rose from the grave, power, power that we don't have. Several years ago, my mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And uh, it's, it's been a few years and she, since she's known my name or the name of anyone else. There was a time a little while back where every Friday I would go and I'd pick her up, and we'd drive around in the car. She didn't know my name, but we would sing hymns together. <laughs> she knew the words to Amazing Grace, although she didn't know my name. She knew the words to Blessed Assurance, because we sang those, those hymns together in church when I was a child. She knew those words, even though she didn't know my name. Well, that was few years back here a couple of months back came the time that we we needed to move her into a memory care unit well I'll go ahead and tell you that was like a a kick in the stomach I can't I can't name many things that were more difficult than that and I began to to pray about it and and it hit me that if 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 mom had had cancer or some other illness, yeah, we wouldn't have hesitated taking her to, to a doctor or a nurse's hospital that could give care that we couldn't give. And, and that's what we were doing. That around the clock, 
they can give her stimulus that, that we couldn't. And a couple of weeks ago, I went to visit her. Yeah, she didn't know my name. And she's past the point of being able to, to remember even the, the words to, to hymns. But in her room, I began to sing. I began to sing Amazing Grace. And she looked up. And she looked in my eyes and she smiled. And I knew that Jesus was there. That his joy, that his joy is stronger than our sorrow. In this day, we can, we can sing a new song by the power of Jesus Christ. It's why we're here. It's why we're here. To sing a new song of praise. A song that gives honor to Jesus and gives thanks to what he does in the, in the here and now and, and can do through, through your life and mine. Pray with me. Jesus, to say thank you, to say thank you, it seems like such a small thing. But it begins to transform us. The thanks, the praise, the honor, the gratitude. It gives us a strength that we don't have. A strength that's stronger than our fear. I know there are folks this morning that this morning they need your strength because they've been focusing too long on, on their fear. This day, enter into to our hearts and our minds that we might practice giving thanks, the praise, the singing to you. Lord, I know that this morning there are folks that need your strength. To know that, that, that your forgiveness is stronger than our failure. That for too long we've been holding on to the rope and practicing our failure or, or the failure of another. We've been practicing betrayal. But this day, Lord, may your word richly dwell in us and that we hear our sins have been forgiven, that we can let go of the rope and we can let go of that strength we've given to someone else, that strength of unforgiveness, and that through praise and honor and thanksgiving to you, that you can give us the strength we need. Lord, we know that this world, it's not a theme park. Every day is not better than the one before. That we have to lean on you. That your word, that Jesus, you might, might richly dwell in inside of us. And then we can practice the words the songs, the hymns, the praise, the honor, the thanksgiving that we picked up this day and carry it into the week. Give us just that, that we might practice your joy. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. 
Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.